Hello everyone, I'm Terry Duke, welcome to my channel. If there's one thing all Fallout 4 players can agree on, it's that Bethesda's optimization is non-existent. So this is my guide for how to make the best out of Fallout 4 to increase overall performance and the frame rate by using both mods and tweaks within the game files. Now I do have to credit several YouTubers here for helping me gather all of these solutions through their content, so if this guide helps you, you should definitely check them out as well. However, I do have to make a disclaimer before we start. While this guide aims to improve performance, to my knowledge there isn't one single solution that works for everybody. If you're here because you're trying to get a steady 60 FPS in the Boston area, you might find a solution, but I can't make any promises. It really depends on a whole bunch of things, from the mods you're currently using to your hardware. In my personal experience, the recurrent problem I have no matter what I do is my GPU never pushing at more than 50% of use. So even when I get AD to 100 FPS, I can never seem to push my GPU further. But assuming you don't have that problem yourself, you might get even better results than me. With that said, let's get into it. We'll first start with the must-have mods, which are critical to improve performance, followed by the valuables, which are not necessary but can still increase your overall performance, we'll then move to the manual tweaks and I'll end up with a few honorable mentions. If you've never modded Fallout 4 before, well, make sure to check out my modding guide before continuing, link down below. So the first must-have mod you should get is the unofficial Fallout 4 patch. This here is an extensive series of bug fixes and optimizations that Bethesda never bothered to make themselves, and should always be the first mod you get if only to stabilize the game as much as possible. This is very much a mod that works in the background, so once it's installed you won't really notice it, but still, that's the first step. But the first mod to really boost performance is high FPS physics fix. By design, the physics in Fallout 4 are directly tied to the frame rate. As such, the higher the frame rate, the faster everything gets. And so, to prevent game breaking bugs, the game is capped at 60 frames per second. With this mod, however, it separates the physics from the frame rate, essentially allowing you to play at higher frame rates without affecting the physics at all. So, as soon as you install it, assuming your hardware is strong enough, you should automatically notice the frame rate is going to be higher in certain areas of the game, which really makes the gameplay much, much smoother. The next mod after that that should really guarantee a steady, higher frame rate is Shadow Boost. Presumably what this mod does is adjust the quality of shadows in real time based on the target frame rate that you choose yourself in a menu. In one video, Juice had claimed he could venture in downtown Boston and still hit a steady 100 FPS thanks to this mod, and the visuals are hardly impacted at all. However, the reason I say presumably is because as of making this video on May 15, 2024, the mod does not work with the latest game updates, something the modder himself confirmed on May 3rd, although he'll be updating it at some point. So regardless of when you watch this video, do check the link in the description and stay on the lookout as with this mod and high FPS physics fix, it might actually be all you need to improve Fallout 4. However, there are other valuable mods out there that can also improve performance, so here's a few of them. Boston FPS Fix PRP Edition presumably fixes the low frame rates in Boston. In my experience, the frame rate is a bit all over the place from the low 40s to the high 60s, so it's not clear whether it works with the latest update, but it's worth a shot. The Sprint Stuttering Fix does just that. If you experience stuttering when you start sprinting, this mod should fix it. Insignificant Object Remover is a overall mod that removes all kinds of small objects from the game such as rocks and twigs. Unless you really care about the high level of detail, this is a simple mod that essentially lightens the game by a fair amount which can increase your overall frame rate. Similarly, Far Away Area Reform is a mod that optimizes textures when they are far away, which is supposed to improve performance, so it's another simple mod that you have no reason not to get. Buffon 4 is another mod similarly to the unofficial patch that solves a few bugs, mildly improves performance, and also leaves a log whenever your game crashes, which can help you figure out what the problem is. It doesn't do anything to improve the frame rate per se, but it can definitely help stabilize your game. And finally, if only for the obvious convenience, Long Loading Times Fix is a mod that makes loading times shorter. How it does that, I have no idea, but it does actually work, so why the hell not? As I've said, none of these mods are guaranteed to really improve performance, but I do encourage you to get them anyway and just experiment, see how it works for you. But now we're getting into the manual tweaks, which are things you can do yourself without the use of mods to optimize the game, and the first part is the game graphics. Now you've most likely adjusted those before, but some settings tend to be very taxing and yet don't really affect the visuals, so it's worthwhile to take a look at a few key features. In terms of anti-aliasing, I recommend using FXAA over TAA, as the visual differences is marginal, but TAA is more taxing, while FXAA is barely more demanding than turning off the setting completely. In the advanced section, I recommend not going further than high for texture, as the difference with Ultra, once again, is marginal at best, but still way more taxing. 
Set Shadow's quality and distance to medium, although to make the most of the medium shadow distance, stick around for the final tweaking. I also recommend turning God Rays off completely, they do look beautiful, but they're very taxing on the GPU, and having not played with them for years, I can say confidently they're not needed, especially if you have other visual mods. Turn on Weapon Debris as well for stability, and also uncheck Motion Blur, because with higher frame rates, it's just horrible. All the other settings feel free to experiment with, but those are the main ones I found to really impact the game, and those are the settings I personally recommend. The only real issue here is that if you're using the script extender, you can't get the graphics menu as there are no launcher. So to access the settings and change them for the script extender, you first need to launch the game through Steam. And once you've put the graphical settings, launch the game, and once you're in the menu, just close it back, and then the settings will apply to the script extender as well. And now, let's get to the INI files. The INI files are a group of files that establish specific values for all aspects of the game, and they can be changed manually so long as you know which line does what. The INI files are not in the game folder, instead you'll find them in documents on your computer. So if you open Windows Explorer and go to this PC, you should have the documents folder right about here. So open it, go to My Games, and then Fallout 4. The two main files here that we'll tweak are Fallout 4 and Fallout 4 prefs. To open the files, I recommend getting Notepad+, which is free, and I left a link for it down below. It's a really simple program, all it does is organize the coding properly. So after installing it, right-click Fallout 4, edit with Notepad+. So the two main lines to adjust here are the ones you see on screen right now. Instead of going through the list to find them though, you can just hit Ctrl F to open the search menu, and start typing the first line, hit enter, and it'll take you right there. So this first line is to disable God Rays completely, as I've said, to improve performance. If it's set to 1, it means God Rays can appear. So if you set it to 0, they will be disabled. This is just an extra way of making sure they don't mess up your game at all. The second line is more important, and this one is about disabling VSync. VSync is the program that forces the game to stay at 60 frames to avoid screen tearing. Normally, that doesn't stop high FPS physics fix from working, but to avoid conflicts and other issues, it's better to disable VSync here by changing the 1 to 0. Next up, let's head to Fallout 4 prefs. Here, there are two valuable settings to tweak, volumetric lighting and shadow distance. Volumetric lighting is a graphic setting that essentially adds depth to lighting effects that mostly affects god rays and indoor lighting in the game. Volumetric lighting is fairly subtle, but it's also taxing on the GPU, so by looking up the line and sending it to zero, you can disable it for a potential performance boost and minimal changes in visuals. And that leaves us with shadow distance. As the game stands, the setting here is terrible. I'm not sure exactly what the numbers stand for, but essentially the higher the number, the higher the quality, the more GPU intensive it gets. The game is set so that medium shadow distance is valued at 3000, while high is 14000, which is a huge disparity. What it means is that at medium, you'll get good performance, but you will see shadows load up in front of you because it's not far enough. But with high settings, the distance is so far that it's basically overkill, and it's also very graphics intensive. So with these lines, you're essentially able to decide yourself what the value should be for medium, allowing you to get a good in-between. So I recommend setting both lines between 8000 and 10000 and go from there. For me at 10000, the shadow distance is still far enough that I can't see it, but it's not so far that it takes away FPS, so doing this really helps with the overall performance. And when you're done with either INI files, just hit save, close notepad, and launch the game as usual. To make sure the game does not change the value in the files while you play, which can happen in some instances, you can also right-click the file, go to properties, and check the read-only box. And to be clear, this is all fully reversible. If you want to revert the setting, just uncheck the box, go back to find the lines in the INI files, and put them back to 1 to re-enable them, simple as that. And in terms of manual tweaks, that's pretty much it. For me personally, that's about as far as I went to try and improve the game, but there are a few more mods that either did not work or had conflicting information on their reliability, but I'll point them out as honorable mentions. Previsabind's Repair Pack Stable Branch PRP is a mod that someone in some form claimed fixed their low GPU usage. I tried it myself, it didn't do anything, that could be because it needs updating from the latest game update, but other people have pointed out that it crashes their games instead. Again, didn't do anything for me, but it might help you out, so it's worth taking a look. Fallout Priority is a simple mod that makes the CPU prioritize Fallout 4 in the Windows Task Manager. I did try it, and I did notice my CPU working harder, but it didn't really affect performance since, again, it's my GPU that keeps dropping the ball. But there also seems to be conflicting info on its reliability, with some people saying it's not needed, others saying it's unnecessarily pushing the CPU too far, so I suggest doing more research on that one, but a lot of people use it, so it might work out. And finally, Bacca Scraphead is a mod that allocates more computer RAM to the game. Sounds good in theory, but some people have argued that if you use Buff Out 4, it essentially does the same thing, and the two mods might actually conflict with each other. So, if you use Buff Out 4, you don't need Bacca, and if you use Bacca, you don't need Buff Out. 
But anyway, hopefully with some of these mods, you'll find you can play Fallout 4 at higher frame rates with more stability. So thanks for watching everyone, feel free to tell me in the comments of your personal mods to improve performance, or what your experience has been with some of them, or hell, if you have a solution to my low GPU problem, I'd greatly appreciate knowing about it. So thanks again, feel free to support the channel with a like and subscribe, and have a good one.